there are 20 items which have 80% value and there are 80 items which have 20% value right. because I'm not going to utilize that money today hmm. I am going to reinvest that money one couple should always have four bank accounts okay Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Inquisitive Investor, a podcast for the investors, by the investors, where we bring to you personal investments and finance journeys of our guests and which help all other folks to learn from them and take wise decisions. Today we have Vikas Gangwal, who started his journey as an intern at HSBC, later on worked at EY as investment professional and as of today, he is working at Berkeley Energy and it, which which invest in renewable investments uh, which Vikas can obviously talk a lot more about so welcome Vikas hi Vikas hi everyone thank you for coming down to the office here thank and you. Uh, we'll, thank we'll, you for calling me here we'll really appreciate if you can start with a quick introduction I think I would say thank you Ashish you've given a good introduction about me but yeah uh, to add I I started my career in 2006, like you mentioned, with HSBC interning, and then it kind of zipped through uh, with companies like DLF and GMR, EY. Yeah, now I've been investing. I've been an pro- investment professional. I am investing in renewable energy space. So yeah, that's that's more about the professional experience in terms of my family. I have my family, my wife, my daughter. Uh, my extended family is still in my hometown Ajmer, Rajasthan. So yeah, that's where I come from. In terms uh, of uh, your hobbies, <laughs> hobbies <laughs> I I like uh, writing uh, on financial modeling topics. I love uh, delivering trainings on financial modeling. I I am a influencer. I write memes on LinkedIn. <laughs> on financial modeling oh, nice. so so you can come across some financial modeling startup related memes on on linkedin which if you appreciate you can uh, set. great uh, so interesting that you are uh, a f- investment professional and uh, are about and you are about to share your investment journey with us really excited to learn and as we were speaking was learning a lot and i was really feeling okay uh, Vikas has a lot more information and I have to be very on my toes today but yeah I'm really keen to learn uh, and so are our viewers uh, let's let's start with very basic uh, basic things right uh, so what's your investment goal as of today Ashish I am like in my 40s right now uh, and I don't see me working for more than 20 15 20 years more more than that so now these 20 years so like i break my everybody would should break their life in of 80 years in four parts okay first 20 years like a kid learning then the first next 20 years where you can take those aggressive bets mm. and uh, take those uh, this is something which i've learned with my hsbc experience by the way so the second 20 years from 21 to 40 is where you can take aggressive bets you can go and invest into equity markets, stocks, take those aggressive. The next 20 years is where you would want to create and build up those uh, portfolio of monthly income plans so that when you retire, you can simply hook onto those income coming your way uh, and you can simply think of retiring at 60. So that's how I split the entire thought process of investing. So that is where I was looking for investments um, about pre-COVID and that's where I came across GRIP and I really like the investment of asset investing and leasing assets was something which I was looking forward to and that's where I started investing through GRIP and I did like uh, initially to do a test check with the minimum tickets so I did invest uh, in more than five, six investments. I want to invest in in a monthly income, something which is generating income for me because now I want to build up that income plan. So, so basically that, after 60, you don't have to work and you are yeah. basically better I want off to, with the I want to build up income. being very blunt and uh, 
in accepting that I want to build up an income which I can I can just simply hook on and continue with my lifestyle which I'm living today. Got it. So do you do you have any number in mind? How much is that number? How much is that passive income? And how are you solving towards that goal as of today? See, uh, I'm sure everybody who's trying to earn and who's earning a salary or a livelihood has that number. That no, you you will be surprised. Uh, it just people have these numbers which are either uh, like uh, very easy to mention. For example, one million dollar or something <laughs> like that, or one CR, right? Based on uh, your own lifestyle. But uh, I think uh, uh, people are not aware of how uh, what number should they be targeting? What are their investment or financial goals? Honestly. Uh, in fact i have been reading a little more about it where in i don't remember where i read or heard it but in america for example folks who planned for their retirement they are not able to now survive because of inflation or some other calculation that they didn't take into account and uh, are now their the survival is becoming difficult no, so i agree to to that uh, ashish See, uh, th- that is one of the reasons why you should take smaller steps. Like, if I am taking a goal today, let's say, hypothetically, if I am getting a lakh rupees a month today, my goal should be to actually match that amount with through my investments today itself. Hmm. And if I am continuing this for 20 years, that smaller goal will keep getting accumulated and compounded year on year. Hmm. Because I am not going to utilize that money today. Hmm. I am going to reinvest that money. Hmm. Okay, I, and hence that uh, inflationary impact will be taken care of by the compounding. But that impact. means you are uh, getting the passive income that you need today, as as of today itself. As of today, but to reinvest, so that I can get continue to get that income later on when I when I need it. <laughs> Then you are like I, you're, you have already <laughs> reached the passive income goal, <laughs> which you are already break even. You have reached break even in life. See, that's the approach uh, I, I want to follow. No, that's, that's really interesting, and uh, is the I think uh, what all uh, podcast that we have done, we came across people who are trying to reach their uh, investment goals. But have you so have you reached uh, your invest this investment goal that? Your expenses are equal to your passive income as of today. Um, so I would say sixty percent. Okay. Because I have tried to match uh, my income with my expenses hmm. in that manner. I want to make sure that my passive income is able to match my expenses. If I'm not like, if I'm investing my home loan EMIs, hmm. I am not taking that into account hmm. in my passive in- expenses hmm. right now. I want to meet. My daughter's school expenses with my passive mm. income. Yes, I can do that. I am mm. able to meet my day-to-day luxury expenses mm. Mm. to a large extent. I can. To a large extent, I wouldn't say I am able to meet 100%. But yeah, 30-40%. Got it. I am able to. So before we get into how you are getting all this uh, passive income generated, let's talk about how did you come to this goal? Where did this philosophy of 2020 20, 20 yeah. come right and who influenced you uh, about so, this uh, i don't know you have heard of this called pareto principle 80 yes but so yeah would that you should explain it for our viewers yeah okay so pareto principle uh, is there are 20 items which have 80% value and there are 80 items which have 20% value right So one should concentrate on those twenty items which have eighty percent of the value. Fair enough. Okay, uh, and you should target to achieve that, and that's the ideology which I kind of learned when I was with HSBC, and it was split that you have life of eighty years, you should be spending on twenty, twenty, twenty at a time, mm. and uh, apply <laughs> that in your life so that you can actually make the best use of it, and. that's where people actually uh, i have like kind uh, it's it's more about learning from others mistake mm. what like you mentioned there are people in america who have not 
been able to achieve their income or inflationary impact they have not taken those into account so try and learn from those experiences i'm not saying that my approach is is the best approach obviously there can be flaws in it i'm not trying to say that that's mm. this is the right approach to do every time mm. but uh, there can be mm. pros and cons and there can be situations which might change mm-hmm. like uh, uh, having worked in the finance background i understand the tax dynamics of it suddenly one fine day a finance minister can come up and say that tomorrow i'm going to tax this so <laughs> things might change i'm not trying to say that my approach is going to be the the best approach because you really don't know whether how right. the tax policies are going to play right like recently uh, the the taxation LIS, on uh, games games gaming, everything yeah. just changed so you really don't know tomorrow you might invest in a life insurance policy and suddenly you say that okay whatever income you're getting from life insurance policies will be taxed uh-huh. it is still date it is allowed under 10d mm. 1010d you you get that benefit of uh, income tax from insurance products but tomorrow you really don't know whether mm. that will be applicable or not good so that is where you need to have those diversifications uh, i have got in pro, on my portfolio insurance portfolio also got company stocks equity so you need to keep juggling and you don't need this this goes with the basic finance rule you don't put all your eggs in one basket right so coming back to that point uh, so you figured this 2020 20 policy and uh, like how did you come to this that hey i'll want to have this passive income i will want to match this passive income as i am entering 40 45 uh, just for the sake of uh, taking an example and then eventually inflation takes care of that piece where did the, where where did you learn about this so where did you when did you finalize this as well see uh, having followed the market okay <laughs> having reinvested in the market for like 10 years 15 years now i am able to see what sort of returns these mutual funds or these in bonds which are which have been delivered everything is linked with your repo rate and repo rates are based on your inflation rates rbi will come into play suddenly hike the rates and interest rates the moment rbi hikes the rate your fd rate goes up if, if your fd rate goes up your fixed returns rates goes up and that's also about your capm principle mm. the capital asset management principle mm. Mm. where your risk free rates is always a base mm. so that automatically takes into your account because if capm is followed everywhere hmm then what is capm capital asset pricing model where your risk free rate is your basic rate again that's a valuation technique which uh, you learn when you are doing valuation so it it talks about that you at least a threshold basic threshold is your risk free rate and then you on top of it you add the equity risk premium based on the risk you are taking on each asset or each class of asset whether you are investing in equity whether you are investing in uh debt or bond or any sort of asset so that's that's that will take care of it got it got it so uh, any any person or anything that helped you figure this out or you figured it out on your own with your own experiences So uh I did consult a few friends uh, in the in the industry experience and try and obviously you discuss when you are in a finance professional you get to discuss with lot of friends especially on tax where I personally find myself uh, on short hand that I am not that good with tax what what are the implications so I I do speak to few friends where are they investing in It's also good when I'm deciding uh, to invest in some companies there are friends who who try to tag along with me that okay hey because if you are investing in a particular startup I'll tag along with you I I've seen that you whatever you invest uh, have actually translated into a value so there have been good a network of friends who ha- actually help me out and at the same time this is also an approach which a lot of uh, big ticket investors also follow they call it tag along mm-hmm. so they they also do this so yeah, yeah. try and approach use the same approach use the same yardstick uh, like 
if you are investing in a company which have big names on on the board it it automatically gives you that comfort that yes you are investing at the right place let now let's talk about your portfolio so uh, what all if if you can give us a percentage wise break up what all uh, instruments are there and uh, what all kind of uh, percentage returns uh, they are giving and also add a flavor of this passive income that this this piece gives me this kind of return see uh, like i mentioned until uh, pre covid i was more on equity i had uh my entire investment was more on equity okay but a bit of fds were there so fixed was also there to balance it out but post covid is where i like uh, kind of dive get into passive income making sure that i am getting that income back uh even fds i will choose not for the compound uh for like make waiting for 5 years to get my money back i will make sure that they are also paying me on a monthly or a quarterly basis so that i can reutilize that money mm-hmm. my principal is locked in but i am getting a, a quarterly return or an interest outflow obviously that hits you back on your tax front but mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you can structure it uh, as an individual like mm-hmm. uh, being a being a jain i can create an hf i can create move my investment into hf that also took me some time to move my investments from my personal equity to my hf mm-hmm. so that structuring tax structuring kind of helped me to make sure that i can overcome the tax uh, challenges which i may come with this passive income uh, so yeah that that is something which i did so as of today as we as we speak i would say uh, 60% is still in equity okay okay uh, that includes some investments in startups too not not Un- the unlisted the ones which are not unlisted ones on the stock market okay not on not on the stock market unlisted got it okay. and any any break up of like how many are these uh, startup equity investments i would say 5 to 6% of the of the of the bigger portfolio uh and then about 30% in in passive income like bonds REIT and invits uh, maybe for some some of your viewers who don't understand pass REIT and invits are again equity like uh, investments but they are more passive income it's like you are investing we are sitting here in gurgaon you want to buy cyber city but you can't buy cyber city as an individual but mm. you can always buy a unit in cyber city which will continue to reap you that uh, passive return rental mm. income okay on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis post tax so you get back that rental income uh, as form of reits so so instead of investing or buying a rental asset okay you can buy those reits so that that kind that kind of offshoots your rental income expectation okay Got and it. at the same time you are diversifying by investing in a REIT you are not investing in a one particular shop or mm. or or a mm. or office space you are investing in the company the yellow cyber city you are not buying uh, 100 square feet in one building you are buying 10 one square feet in 100 different buildings mm. okay you are so, really diversified yes you are diversified so that way is you you are risk averse and at the same time because rental assets these assets are owned by the reit so value of these assets will go up in mm. the longer run so the capital appreciation tags along so you get that benefit too got it so that that helps so that is uh, these passive income including the asset investments will be about 30% mm. and then left will be your fds in uh, classic bond i would say the pf ppf and uh, classic investments the nscs and ppfs got it and where does grip fit into this portfolio i would say passive income was the the agenda which i started with okay so yeah, my passive income asset investments to be diversified asset investment is where i i was looking to Got it. aspire from grip so how often do you review your portfolio or do you 
like do sips or do you like invest on your own in certain period so what's the the review or the change mechanism that you follow see uh, so i do sip uh, because of the reinvestment i have to do with right, the passive right, income right, so sip, right. sip goes well uh, really well with, with the passive income being generated okay in terms of review i would say i uh, i do a monthly review easily mm-hmm. i i generally take out one of the saturdays i pick up one of the saturdays and i am comfortable i go through my portfolio where my stocks are and especially when you are uh, actively invested in stock uh, you want to make sure you get the 52 week high benefit always <laughs> mm-hmm. and you invest in uh, in where 52 week those are so you have those alerts being set hmm. okay so those alerts keeps coming on so you are not like uh, every morning 9:15 you are not that person uh i do but uh, it that is not often at times when i am like occupied with work i skip that but yeah when the day is uh, slightly low on task i i can i can jump on because Usually mornings I have my professional calls lined up, so I I might not do that 9:15 9:30 calls. So does your uh, investment background or working in Berkeley Energy give you any uh, additional advantage when you are making your investment decisions? My my past experience uh, do help me in terms of understanding. Uh, what what is happening in the industry what is uh, how, how and and at the same time having worked with a lot of these promoters i know what is their what their psyches are uh, how they are thinking or how your shark tank mm. investors sharks are thinking where they are investing and i know where to look for those where they made the investments how mm. have they made the investments what are the decisions so Yeah so I have, I've been following Shark Tank very closely both the seasons yeah 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 in fact as i said i have been part of some angel network so i have been to events where startups have been pitching hmm. have come come for pitch have made their pitch have uh, you acted like a shark like someone came to pitch and you were like take my check <laughs> <laughs> uh no not yet <laughs> not yet reach that level but uh i have helped uh some hnis to make those decisions Good. like i mentioned i have uh, i have they have their friends who who have been invest who have been investing mm. in sharks uh, in in the startup market and i have been mentoring a lot of startups also so yeah that uh, kind of helps me that okay i know this organization i know the promoter uh, so that helps in in getting those investments and raising Good. those investments So thank you for explaining your uh, portfolio to us. So with your experience we really want to know what are the uh, some of the myths that uh, you can de- debunk for us uh, that you have learned in your journey. One of the myths which we talked about is that one should wait for 60 years to build a passive income. Hmm. I think that's the biggest I can talk about mm. uh, that you should not be waiting for 50 years or 60 years where I will go out and buy a pension product mm. you should be thinking in your 40s to build that pension product or maybe to 20s to build that pension product because the quicker the earlier you do it the better it is for you when you when you decide to unlock it right uh, even that is true for your term insurance like you go and delay to buy a term insurance when you when you have a family or when you have uh dependence on you then it becomes costly for you mm. the moment you are younger you uh, you get that term insurance cheap mm. at the same time like how do you go about deciding what should be the amount like you you were asking me a while back that question still applies on your insurance product what should be your coverage mm. <laughs> because that that is something which you cannot ascertain at this po- at any point of time uh but yeah any anything else other than this uh other than this is uh, people think that you uh, like like i mentioned fds will be taxed income on fds will be taxed you can manage those tax tax is all about management hmm. i'm not trying to say that you uh, do some sort of investments which is 
or you don't disclose the, those to the tax authorities mm. you should be disclosing but you can always structure your tax in a manner right by creating there are regulations you ha- you should consult your tax advisor and don't shy off from disclosing to your tax advisor that uh, I, I plan to do this mm. how should i structure because at times you feel that okay I, I go out and tell that okay i plan to earn from this particular investment that person will also copy and that will make fun of me so don't shy off from doing that okay that guy is your advisor tax advisors are meant to help you make sure that you are not taxed by and, tax advisors you mean ca ha huh, ca or it can be anybody it can be somebody who understand tax better than you got it okay and he he or she might help you with that like what you should be doing mm. okay i am not trying to say that you go to a ca always for everything he or she can be in your family who understands tax better than you at least he or she can so have you have you seen any downside of it like is it some is it uh, something that you learned some yeah over later the years or... over the years so like uh, dividend wasn't taxable until 2015 16 got it dividend was tax free because you used to pay ddt dividend distribution tax hmm. after that whatever dividend was being earned by the recipient was tax free hmm. okay and suddenly the tax regulations changed now whatever dividend you are earning is taxable aren't div- are dividends taxable right now yes dividends are taxable today is, aren't they uh, pro- profits after after taxes and they are already taxed at the corporate end that you ha- even even then you were supposed to pay dividend distribution tax but now dividend distribution tax was abolished and the investors who are receiving dividends are uh, taxed got it and okay. do you do you by any chance know um, uh, if if we are getting dividends from our stocks are they coming after tds so we have to pay they are coming after tds you got get it. your form 16 for those got th- it. those and you need to declare those and nowadays with with technology coming It's into play automatically. it automatically reflects in your 26 as yes. nsfts yes so but point is uh, that ch- that shift in in policy hmm. uh, made me think of more ways to find out create my hf right, create right, right. Uh, your own like a lot of these families the hni families have their family trust hmm. like the tatas have their tata trust why do they create those trust right, right. what is the objective of that trust hmm. what is it is it meant for uh, like operation or some sort of uh, foundation some of them are i'm not trying to say so like basically what you're trying to trying to say there are uh, uh, there are better uh, ways as well to plan your taxes and yes. uh, everyone uses certain methods and everyone should figure out what works best for them yes. in the legal umbrella yeah. and they should be going to the proper tax advisors or CAs to get that advice yes no I and mean, it's also about like uh, at times people are shying of how should we deal with it like um, you get some legacy investments your grandfathers inheritance. Pa- inheritance grandfathers have passed on some investments to you suddenly you uh, you were not prepared for it and suddenly something have come up so you can put that in a family trust rather than receiving it in your personal kitty so whatever investments or earnings you are getting from that are not taxed in your hands that will be taxed in your trust mm. so you can do those structuring i have experienced those and those sort of things can change you can actually shuffle that around this this just reminded me of uh, this scene from soshank redemption have you seen soshank yes. redemption this uh, these workers uh, this tax guy and all the workers are working on the top of the building this policeman is discussing hey i am getting inherited uh, uh, 36k dollars or something and they were discussing it. but unfortunately irs will irs will take x percent this guy is, suddenly says do you trust your wife mm. this guy is like i'll kill you what are you saying and he said if you trust her you can save taxes and then he explains all that yeah so things like those yes people tend to do in fact there are individuals whose wives are most of them are housewives there are people they can pa- park some money because uh, i i think their their challenges 
uh, clubbing of income uh, will come into play but still uh, there are provisions like you i'm sure anybody who's married gives some amount for monthly expenses Excellent. to their their spouse who are not working yeah. Yeah. not yeah. working so you you hand over some certain money to them and they are allowed to save certain amount from that hmm. and use that amount to invest so let's say i have given 10000 rupees to my wife to meet my monthly expenses mm -hmm. okay and she is able to ex meet my expenses and 8000 rupees the remaining 2000 rupees she is allowed to invest she mm -hmm. can go out and buy a simple fd for that 2000 oh, nice. rupees so nobody is going to come and ask uh, why ha huh, tax authorities will not come and ask and she is she can certainly say and declare that okay i've saved my husband gives me my monthly expenses i have saved this is my personal saving so mm -hmm. that becomes her personal saving not the uh, my husband's personal saving right. because husband has given her the monthly expenses and that's the way one should be dealing right right this reminded me of one uh, good good thing which you were talking about shashank redemption uh, i'm just missing out this name uh, this uh, character this gentleman who is a very good orator is an again american presenter he says that one couple should always have four bank accounts okay okay one should one should be in the wife's name one should be in the husband's name and then there should be two accounts one should be the joint account for your investments and your long term goals the other joint account should be making sure your uh, you're meeting the required expenses whether your family expenses your uh, hemi is mm -hmm. your kids expense school fees everything and the individual accounts remain your personal accounts where you are spending neither wife should be asking the husband the husband shouldn't mm -hmm. be asking where she is spending mm -hmm. the money from her personal account nice. <laughs> do you do you follow this to a large extent yes so you, you my wife is for, unfortunately she is working she is earning her own money so she, i i have never asked where she is spending nice yeah the, that goes without saying right? yeah, yeah I, but i've advised her where she she should be putting in her money mm. like if she wants to put some money in some kitty so that decision still remains a joint decision that we want to keep some money for our daughter so we we decide where to put put that in a ppa for something that is a joint decision always obviously we have some uh, now interesting questions uh, lined up ahead okay so if you if you are given 2 crore rupees uh, today how would you allocate that money okay uh, and like knowing you now uh, i would say you are in your 20 to 40 bucket so how would you allocate okay. that 2 crore so now? 20 to 40 bucket because that's that's where our audience is as of today got it uh, the more the younger audience maybe somebody who's starting yeah. up his career yeah and they have 2 uh, crore rupees they have suddenly got 2 <laughs> crore rupees that's that's a very yeah. uh, naive post tax 2 <laughs> crore rupees <laughs> that's that's fine uh, it's like go, going to kbc and getting yes. that <laughs> the jackpot question yes. out yes and suddenly you got that and that's a very bitter truth like i i keep asking lot many people who watch kvc that mm. what will you do suddenly if you get that mm. money mm. and so uh, to answer that i i would say like uh, even if i'm in, in my 20s mm. okay i will make sure that i am co covering my future mm. by doing some sort of investment in insurances mm. because to mm. make sure that my future is covered and uh, if god for but something goes wrong hmm. i will go out and buy an insurance uh, second is try to uh, try to make investments which will uh, be obviously riskier slightly riskier in equity so i would say again pareto principle 80% in uh, in equity okay and then 20% in passive income creating some amount so that i can keep getting back because if you say that i am not investing in in passive income that's something which nobody should be doing if you're putting all your uh, money in um, in equity then that's the worst thing you can do as a as an investor you shouldn't be doing uh, putting all your money in equity got it okay 
so i would say 80% and even those 80% uh i i would look up dividend yielding stocks hmm maybe uh, some psus like the uh, uh maybe sale ongc iocl uh, something like uh, gale or uh, railways some irfc recs Hmm. Like RIC is a very good stock. <laughs> I've been following. Yeah, uh, they Just, have. Uh, <laughs> we should mention uh, this is not an investment advice. Yeah. Everyone should make their own decisions before investing. Uh, Vikas is speaking out of his own experiences, and he is investing. Please, 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 do your own diligence before investing in anything. Agreed. So I'm not trying to uh, yeah. give you an advice. Okay, it's more about uh, just sharing experiences. There are these are stocks which are dividend yielding. They they keep giving you regular dividends. Mm. So uh, they have been delivering dividends, and dividends are subject to Mark. profits and uh, earning profits in these companies. But they have been declaring dividends in past. So there are stocks which are giving dividends on a regular basis. You should follow. You you can think. scout for these opportunities so that you are getting back some money hmm. uh, you are able to make some investment and that's something which i keep saying to people who come who have attended my trainings uh, financial modeling trainings they ask for some advice at times hmm. that sir where should we start from i was like start from some dividend yielding stocks so that you get back some money you hmm. are getting from your investment because that is the moment you get those dividends you feel it good. gives that uh, booster that yes the investment i've made is making sense mm. that's something which i've been telling my startup founders also that uh, instead of doing a cash burn model okay you think of making profits and distributing that profit back to your investors they will just they will excited. come back and reinvest in your company the moment they know that yes this guy this is guy is going to returns. going to give you returns Right, right. If that return is only four percent, even then, that doesn't matter. Four mm. percent is like your savings bank return, but that four percent dividend will give that um, confidence in your investors mm. that this company is a bettable stock or this company is a profitable company, and hence, in the longer run, it is going to make profits. Right. So. Uh, another question we have this uh, tagline go beyond uh, go beyond uh, fluctuations go beyond low returns go beyond inflation so what's your go beyond mantra go beyond the classic products so like uh, start looking at like people are not aware of the products like invert and reits like i mentioned mm-hmm. so i i keep uh, my eyes and ears open for new products out in the market and mm. try and understand how those are operating hope you check out uh, grips new products <laughs> <laughs> certainly i'm going to do uh, that after invoice this invoice x loan x and we have a fresh new product called bond x okay yeah certainly i'm going to do that yeah. uh, after the podcast so yes uh, i keep my eyes and ears open in fact when i started investing in mutual fund my parents were not even aware what mutual funds are how does mutual fund operate this was back in 2006 7 so they were like where are you putting your money we don't understand all these things the the don't run 6 12 wow. 6 7 yeah so they are like whether your money is safe or not uh, how how are you trusting these folks like trust me i'm not putting a bigger bet i'm just putting like 10000 rupees it is not going to if 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 i lose i lose hmm okay that's that's the smaller steps and you take those baby steps you you know how amc is and then suddenly one fine day people are like uh, they were out in the market uh, they were advertisements mutual fund uh, mf started marketing yeah mutual fund has yes, mutual fund sahi hai sachin tendulkar yeah, mahi yeah. yeah so everybody was like okay mutual funds are good products so people were like okay otherwise classic products are like fd why don't you do a fixed deposit why mm. don't you do uh, uh i think people PPF. start with fd uh, yeah. because of uh, i think saving comes first then investment that's how people uh, <laughs> see uh, I, i would say 
if you ask being a marwadi i have seen like people will buy gold <laughs> yeah. okay people will go out and buy gold people will go and buy silver and then do fds mm. do uh, real estate investments they find those investment more safer because then we didn't talk about real real estate do you have real estate in your portfolio how much percentage would, would that be uh, so in terms of hard asset my own house is my own house so, uh, so that is one uh, and then obviously in uh, investments through reit mm. are there uh, and then there are few small commercial uh, property which i bought in my my hometown mm. uh, those are small tickets uh, those are small tickets so uh, but still those are there in my portfolio got it just one last thing from uh, you what's your view on alternative investments why did you start in alternatives is it is it something that you have recommended to your friends as well see um, as i said you should always diversify okay an alternative investment is also a diversification the approach of diversification uh, it gives you more obviously some of those startup investments are riskier investments uh, you should be taking cautious call when you are investing in startups whether they are going to translate and this is something which i keep telling um, a lot of my training uh, attendees that startup investment is more like having a nursery business where you mm. seed 15 seeds mm. and fifth out of those 15 seeds five will translate into a sapling and that's a very good then, number then percentage wise <laughs> five will translate into a sapling and then eventually one or two will translate into a tree, a tree and then and that one tree is going to reap you fruits yeah, yeah so you should make sure that at least one out of those five or 10 will translate into that our uh, fruit bearing mm. tree right so that you are able to enjoy the fruit mm. because that that is what uh, everybody is after okay you want to enjoy the fruit which you are investing so that's that's the approach uh, you should diversify the more the seeds you sow the better it is okay and hence diversification whether in form of alternate investment funds bonds uh, ppf i'm not trying to to say that government uh, government products are, are bad or you should not be doing nscs you should be doing nscs you should be doing but at the same time the only thing i would say at times people tend to come back and say why don't you do ulip i have never done a ulip product i was like insurance i'm meant for insurance don't mix up things yeah. i am more more of a classic guy if i want to make an investment i'll make it through mutual funds or mm-hmm. or directly mm-hmm. in those products okay so i'm not against ulips but somewhere i feel insurance is to cover is a different uh, huh. in product altogether and yeah. it's not in code thank you thank you very much vikas uh, quickly i would like to summarize what i learned today uh, i i really like this 80 20 concept where uh, rather than thinking hey at this point after retirement i'll be meeting this my passive income goal uh i should be thinking about that hey i want to reach that passive income goal at this date as of today or n- in near future so that inflation and some other aspects that are unforeseen like tax changes or any policy changes by the government are taken care in that second advice that i am taking away is having a great tax planner or a tax advisor by your side so that you are able to enjoy better returns or better post tax returns uh, so that's all from our side that's that's it on the inclusive investor for today from vikas and me hope you like this episode and if you have any questions please share them in comment box and we'll be happy to answer them till that moment get a grip on your money and go beyond thank you Investments in debt securities are subject to risk. Read all the offer related documents carefully. The investor is requested to take into consideration all the risk factors before the commencement of trading. This communication does not constitute advising relating to investing or otherwise dealing in securities and is not an offer or solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Grip does not guarantee or assure any return on investments and accepts no liability for consequences of any actions taken based on the information provided. For more details, visit www.gripinvest.in.